Hello everyone. Today we're going to learn how to implement our own JWT authentication inside of our Nest.js application. We are also going to learn how to use refresh tokens to get new access tokens as well. Before we get started, first we have to understand the concept between refresh tokens and access tokens. When a user first logs in, they get a refresh token and an access token. For every request the user makes, the user passes an access token inside of an HTTP header. The server then uses this access token to identify who the user is. However, access tokens are short-lived and usually only last 15 minutes to an hour. Once the access token expires, the application then calls the refresh endpoint of our server to get a new access token using the refresh token. With that out of the way, let's dive into coding this project. We're going to use nest.js as our server, and you're also going to want to make sure you have the CLI installed globally. Then type nest new, and our project name is going to be nest.js JWT auth tutorial. Once the Nest application is built, we're going to create two resources, one being users and the next will be our auth resource. To do this, we're going to do Nest G, which the G stands for generate, and then our resource name, which for the first one is going to be users. Now we select API and we don't need to generate CRUD endpoints for this app. Then we'll do the same things for the auth endpoint. So we'll type Nest G auth, and then we can use a REST API without any CRUD endpoints. To begin, the first thing we need to do is create our user type. So inside of entities in user entity, we're gonna create our class user, which has an ID of number, a name of string, an email of string, and then a password of string as well. Then inside of user service, we can just create a couple of sample users. Now on a real app, these users would be in a database, but for the purposes of this tutorial, to keep things simple, everything will be stored in memory. Next, we will need a couple of helper function inside of our user service. So the first one will be find by email, which is just gonna take an email, and it's gonna return a promise of a user or undefined. Now to find our user, we're gonna create a new variable of user, and we're gonna set it to this.users.find, and then we're gonna check if users.email is equal to the email that has been passed in. Now if that variable is not undefined, then we will wrap it in a promise.resolve to mock our data being fetched from a database. Otherwise, we're just going to return undefined. We'll create one more helper function in user service called find1. And it's almost an exact copy of find by email, except for it takes an ID. And instead of using the users.find and checking by email, we are instead going to check by ID. With our basic user service out of the way, we can now navigate to auth.service to create the code that is required for our JWT authentication. The first thing we'll do is we'll create a refresh token type. So in entities, we'll create a new file called refresh.token.entity, and it's going to be a type ID of number, user ID of number, user agent of string, and IP address of string. Then I'm going to create a function inside of our refresh token class called sign, and it will be converting the object of refresh token into a signed JWT string. To do this, we're going to need the JSON web token package. So we will have to type npm install JSON web token in the terminal to get this package. I also want the types package from JSON web token, so we're going to install in dev dependencies at type slash JSON web token. Now back in our refresh token object, we can do sign of this and then pass in our process.m.refresh secret. Now you'll notice up top in our imports, I am extracting sign from the JSON web token package. And now I have to create our refresh secrets and our access secrets. To create our secrets, there's a cool site called randomkeygen.com that I use to get all my secrets. If you scroll down to the very bottom, you'll get 152-bit keys and 256-bit keys. We will use the 256-bit key for our refresh token and a 152-bit key for the access token. So we can create a new file called .env inside our nest.js root directory, and inside of it we can add our refresh secret and access secret. 
Now in order for nest.js to get these values, we need to use the nest.js config module. So we'll type npm i save at nest.js slash config. And then inside of our app.module, in the imports area, we're going to import config module.forroot. This function is basically looking for a .env file in our root directory, and if it finds one, then it'll set the environment variables to the variables listed inside of there. With that out of the way, our refresh token is almost done. We just need to add a constructor for the class, since just assigning types that look like refresh tokens, the sign method will be unavailable to them. An easy way to create a constructor for class is using the partial indicator. So we're going to create an init variable and set it to partial of refresh token. And then we're going to say object.assign this and init. Now that refresh token is done, we can go back to auth.service. Inside of auth.service, we're going to create a new function called login. And it's going to take in an email of type string, a password of type string. And then we're also going to include some values. That's an object of user agent string and IP address of string. This function will be returning a promise that's an object of access token and refresh token or undefined. Now I need user service inside of our auth service, so we're going to use nest.js's dependency injection and we're going to do private read only user service of type user service inside of our constructor of auth service. In order for auth service to get user service, we have to go down and inside of user.module.ts we're going to add exports and export user service. Then in auth.module.ts, we're going to import user module. Back at our login function, we're then going to get the user and we're going to find it by awaiting this.userService.find by email and pass in the email. And I'm not going to spend too much time on the actual authentication part of this project, but for this, we're using email and password. And we're just going to simply check if the user exists, and then if it does, if the password is equal to the password we checked. Now in a real app, you're going to be using argon2 and hash it and then store that user in a database. But for simplicity, we're just going to check if the passwords match. Once we've authenticated that the user is actual, we now need to give them a refresh and access token. So to do this, we're going to create another helper function that's a private async new refresh and access token. This function takes in a user of user object and then values of the same values in login of user agent and an IP address. And we're going to be returning in this function a promise of an access token and a refresh token. Now we need to create our refresh token object, so we're going to create a new variable called refresh object and we're going to set it to the constructor of refresh token. And then in the constructor, we're passing in an ID. And I'm just doing some simple arithmetic here to get the ID of the last token. And if there's no tokens and refresh tokens, it'll it do zero. And then we're also doing values and user ID. Now we add the refresh token to our in-memory database of sorts. So we'll do this.refreshtokens.push. Again, in a real application, you're storing these refresh tokens in a database. However, for simplicity, we're storing these in an in-memory array. Now finally, we're going to return our refresh token and we're going to set it to refresh object dot sign using that helper function that we created. And then also we're going to pass in access token, which is going to be sign, which is imported from JSON web token and then an object of user ID set to user dot ID process dot dot access secret. And then we're also going to add inside of our options. We're going to say expires in one hour. And depending on your needs, this can be anywhere from 15 minutes to one hour is typically the recommended time period. Now back in our login function, we can just say return this dot new refresh and access token and we'll pass in our user and values. Now our login function is completely done so we can move on to a new function called refresh, which refresh will be taking in the refresh string and it will be returning a new access token. So we're going to return a promise of type string or undefined. In order for this function to work, we need an easy way to convert a refresh token string that is being passed by our application into an actual refresh token object that is from our database. So we're going to create a helper function called private retrieve refresh token that accepts a refresh string and it will be returning a promise of a refresh token. We will wrap all this code inside of a try statement and we're going to say decoded is equal to verify 
and verify is being imported from JSON web token. And we're going to pass in the refresh string and our process.im.refresh secret. If our refresh string is not a valid refresh token, then verify will throw an exception, which is why we have our catch at the bottom where we're returning undefined. After verify in our try statement, we're going to check if decoded is of type string, and if it is, we're going to return undefined. Otherwise, we're going to return the promise.resolve of this.refreshtokens.find, where token is equal to the decoded.id. Back in our refresh method in our auth service, we can set refresh token to equal to the await of this dot retrieve refresh token and we'll pass in our refresh string. Then we can check if refresh token is not defined, which if it's not, then we're just going to return undefined. And then if it is, we're going to find the user. So we're going to say const user is equal to this dot user service dot find one of the refresh token dot user ID. Then we will check if the user is undefined and if it is, we're going to return undefined. Otherwise, we're going to create our access token, which is of type user ID, and we're going to pass in the user.id. Then we can sign our access token using the sign from JSON Web Token. We'll pass in our payload object of the user ID, a process.inv.access secret, and then expires in one hour. The last thing left to do in our auth.service is create our logout method. Logout will accept a refresh string of type string and a return void. Then we're going to check if refresh token is actually a token. So we'll do const refresh token is equal to the await of this dot retrieve refresh token passing in our refresh string. Then next, if refresh token is undefined, we are going to then return. Otherwise, we're going to delete refresh token. Now in your application, you're just going to want to delete this from our database. And here I'm just deleting it from the in memory array. By deleting the refresh token, we are essentially logging out the user from making further requests. With our auth service finished, we can then use these in our auth.controller file. The first endpoint we're going to create is a post request of login. And it's going to be a simple login function which accepts a request, which we're using the TypeScript decorator rec to get the express request object. And then the IP as well, as well as our body, which is going to be a login DTO object. To get our body, we need to create our DTO. So inside of auth, we're going to create a new directory called DTO. And then we'll create a new file called login.dto.ts, which is going to take in an email and a password. Now back on our controller, we can simply return the auth services login function passing in our values. The next request will be a refresh token, so we'll create another post request, and it's going to accept in the body a refresh token DTO. This DTO object will be a simple refresh string. And back in our controller, we're just going to return auth service refresh. The final endpoint is going to be a delete endpoint, and it's going to be our logout function. And like our refresh token, our logout function is just simply going to be returning this.authservice.logout. And as our body, we're just going to utilize that same refresh token DTO object. Now, in order for all these endpoints to be useful, we have to have a way to validate our access tokens on request. To do this, we're going to use passport.js. So we're going to have to run npm install passport. And because we are using the JWT strategy of Passport, we also need to install npm install passport-jwt. And we will install those types as well. With that all installed, we can create our first strategy. So inside of auth, we're going to create a new directory called strategies, and then create a file jwt.strategy.ts. This will be a class called JWT strategy, and it's going to extend Passport strategy. And we're going to pass in strategy imported from passport-jwt. Now inside of the constructor for this class, we're going to call super and then pass in the parameters, the first one being jwt from request. And we're going to set that to extract jwt from auth header as bare token, which all this is doing is telling passport-jwt where our jwt token is located. And in our example, it's going to be in the auth header as a bearer token. Next, we're going to set ignore expiration to false. And then we're going to pass in our secret or key as the access secret. Now, every passport strategy has a method called validate. In passport JWT, validate as a parameter is payload. And that is simply the decoded JWT object. And then it returns an object, which is then set to the user inside of response headers.
So for us, we're just going to return user ID set to payload.user ID. And we'll see in a moment how we can use this. Now we also need to create a guard for endpoints. So we're going to create a new directory called guards, and we're creating a file called jwt-auth.guard. Now this is the guard that our endpoints can call to make sure that the user has a valid access token. So it's going to be an injectable class called jwt-auth-guard, and we're going to extend auth-guard, and we're going to pass in the type to jwt. Then every guard has a method called handle request, with the following parameters of air, user, info, context, and status. All this guard is going to be is we're going to check if info is instance of JSON web token air. So in that case, uh, air occurred while the strategy was decoding our JWT. And if so, we're going to throw an unauthorized exception in JWT. Otherwise, we're going to call super.handle request. In order for our controllers to use JWT strategy, we have to add it as a provider in auth module. So navigating to auth.module, we can include JWT strategy in the list of providers. With those guards in place, now we can actually use our access token. So inside of user.controller, we're going to create a new git request called slash me. And then above it, we're going to add the TypeScript decorator use guards, and then we're going to pass in our JWT auth guard. Inside of the parameters for me, we're going to then get our expressed request object. So we're going to add the TypeScript decorator at rec and then call it request. Now to get that user ID, we're going to say const user ID is equal to request.user.user ID. And that user is what we set our JWT strategy object to. So that's how we're getting our user ID. Then we can simply return the user service find one and pass in our user ID. For the me endpoint, if an uh, invalid JWT access token is passed, then that unauthorized error will be thrown. And otherwise, we're continuing to the rest of the execution seen in the function. Now to test this, we can create a new request in Postman called login, and it's going to be set as a post request, and the URL is going to be localhost 3000 slash auth slash login. And then in the body, we can enter it as JSON, and we can just pass email as bob at gmail.com and password as bob pass. Now if we run this request, we should be getting a refresh token and an access token. We can use this access token in our me request. So if we create a new request called me, and it's going to be a git request to localhost 3000 slash user slash me, and then inside of the authorization tab, we can select bear token, and then in token, we can pass in that access token. Now you see under the code segment, you can see what this HTTP request looks like. So basically we're setting the authorization header to bear and then the token. When you run this request, you should see the user object that correlates to that access token. If you run the request with an invalid access token, you'll get our status code 401 with a message of unauthorized. We can also test our refresh endpoint by adding another post request that is at localhost 3000 slash auth slash refresh. And inside the body, we're simply passing our refresh token and when you run the request, you'll get a new access token string. Now finally, we have the logout request. So this will be a delete request at localhost 3000 slash auth slash logout. And then our body is going to be a JSON refresh token, and then we'll pass in that refresh token. So there you have it, a simple access token and refresh token authentication flow in Nest.js. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking it and then subscribing as I will be posting more content like this in the future.